In this optional video, we're going to talk about solving systems by elimination. So having this extra thing in your toolbox will make some problems uh, simpler, kind of less steps. You can always use substitution, but it's good to have this extra thing in your uh, toolbox to use. All right, so the reason we can't solve a system like a normal equation, like we reviewed solving linear equations, all right, the reason you can't solve like that is because there's two different variables. This is kind of x and y. We can't just solve um, x when there's also a y. However, we can eliminate, if we can get rid of one of the variables, then we suddenly have an equation with only one variable and we can solve it using our normal techniques. Right, so how can we do that? How can we eliminate a variable? All right, well, if we look at this equation right here, all right, there's not really much I can do to get rid of this x um, the way we're looking at it. But what I can do is I can always manipulate equations to make them look a little bit different. So what I'm going to do is take this top equation. And again, you don't have to see this right away because I'm going to kind of explain it to you. But if I take this top equation, that equation is going to become 4x minus 2y equals 8. And because I did the same thing on both sides of the equation, this black equation here is the same as this top equation here. And I don't have to change the bottom equation at all. But you might see what just happened. If I look at these two equations, I have this minus 2y on the top and this plus 2y on the bottom. And those things are opposites. So now if I take these equations and add them together, and is this legal to do? Well, if these two things are equal and these two things are equal, then their resulting addition should be equal, right? If 2 is the same as 2 and 3 is the same as 3, 2 plus 3 is the same as 2 plus 3, that type of thing. All right, so 4 and x, 4x and 3x becomes 7x, and minus 2y and positive 2y, they cancel out, so they're gone. And now on the right-hand side, I just have 21. So I've eliminated by adding these two equations in a way that gets rid of the y. Now I have a simple equation I can solve for x, just divide by 7, x is 3. All right, so by eliminating one variable, we can use our kind of normal techniques for solving to get the other variable. But now we have to remember, well, we also need to know what y is to find the solution to equation. So I can take x and plug it in for either of these x's. Again, generally, I'm always just going to pick the one that has the smaller number. So I'm going to take this x and plug it into this top one there. 2 times 3 minus y equals 4. Subtract 6 from both sides. Multiply both sides by negative 1. Together, now I know x is 2, y, or sorry, x is 3, y is 2. So this is the um, method of elimination. I kind of manipulate the equations first so that when I add them together, one of the variables disappears, right? There's zero y here, it's just gone. So I can solve this equation for x, and then I have to go remember, I need the relationship between x and y. So now that I have the x that it has to be, I can figure out what the y has to be as well. And that's all the steps written out here. All right, so you can pause it and kind of write them down in your notes. I right, you figure out what you want to eliminate, make sure everything matches up, add the equation so that one thing goes away, and solve for the simpler equation after that. Right, it's very rare that you're not going to have to kind of manipulate the equations at the beginning, right, and that's what makes elimination a little bit more front-loaded work, but the ending, I think, is a little bit simpler. So substitution, you're always trying to figure out something to solve for. Elimination, you're trying to figure out what can I add together to cancel out. Um, again, I'm always going to look at the smaller number, so I'm going to look here. It looks like the x's will be easier to cancel out in this case because 2 and 3 are smaller than 3 and 5. But I need to make these things opposites, so when I add them together, they cancel out. So how do I turn 2 and 3 into the same thing? Well, if I take the 2 and multiply it by 3, and again, I have to do it to everything, then that'll give me 6. Take the 3 and multiply it by 2, that'll also give me 6. So I'm kind of just using one coefficient in the other equation. This 2 goes there, that 3 goes there. If I do that, I'll have 6x and 6x. Those are the same, not opposites. So how do I make them opposites? I just make one of these numbers negative. And it doesn't matter which one you make negative. I'm making the bottom one negative. But now my system, everything's going to be the same because I'm multiplying everything on equal signs. Um, this is going to be 6x plus 9y equals 12. This bottom one's going to be minus 6x minus 10y equals negative 10. So you have to be real careful with your negatives and things. I right, but now I see if I were to add these equations together, because I did this work, the sixes, or sorry, the sixes, the x's are going to cancel out because I have opposites. Uh, but the y part, now I'm going to have just a negative y and a positive 2.
And I can solve this equation pretty simply. y is negative 2. And now I just have to go back and get x. So I can plug x, or the, sorry, this y into any of these equations. I can plug into equation 1, equation 2, equation 3, equation 4. I would generally never use equation 3 or 4 because you just multiply to make the numbers bigger. So why would you use the bigger numbers when you can use smaller numbers? Um, and again, I'm always just looking for smaller numbers because it's normally a little bit less taxing. Um, so I'm going to take this y and I'm going to plug it in for that y there because 3 is smaller than 5. Not really anything sophisticated about picking one over the other. That's just the way I do it. And now it's just solving for this x. Add that 6 to the other side. And x equals 9. Is that right? 9, 18. That no, can't be right. Did I mess up? Oh, I know what I messed up. It's good that I find this stuff. Um, I use this number here in this equation, but the equation should be 4. So it should be a 4 instead. I'm just going to change all this. That's 10, and x is 5. Does that make sense? 10. So yeah, that makes sense. All right, so now my answer is 5, comma, negative 2. All right, so this is the full elimination method. Um, making sure you manipulate the equations so that something cancels out when you add them. It could be x or y here. You could have multiplied the top equation by 5, the bottom equation by negative 3, and the y's would cancel out. It doesn't matter which one, um, but like I said, I just choose the, the smaller numbers. Right, so here's one for you to try on your own. I right, go ahead and uh, solve this uh, system by elimination. I'll show you the solution in 3, 2, and right, here's the answer you get. You get 2, negative 3. I chose to eliminate the x's by multiplying the top equation by negative 2. All right, you also could have chosen to eliminate the y's by multiplying the bottom equation by negative 2, and they would be opposites. All right, either way, you should get down to the same answer. All right, so here's the important things. All right, now you, if you watch this video, you can have two methods to solve a system of equations. Um, generally, if the numbers are pretty close together, I think elimination is easier. Like if I say like a 2x on the top and a 4x, in the second equation, those are pretty close. I can just multiply the top by 2 to get them to cancel. Um, I'll choose uh, substitution if I already have one variable by itself. So like here, I don't have anything in front of the x. Super easy to solve for. I would do uh, substitution. But really, it's up to you which one you choose. All right, they're both effective methods. So sometimes one is a slightly better choice in terms of the number of steps it's going to take you. All right, and the final thing, all right, for now, you can pick which one you want, but there's a future lesson where substitution is kind of the only way to do it, so it might be helpful to practice your substitution. Are right, there certain uh, systems you'll see where it's really obvious to do elimination because you'll have, like, an equation that looks like this, and like, it's super easy. Just eliminate it. The y's go away. All right, but substitution is something you want to keep practicing because uh, it's something you'll have to use soon.